Therefore, it is time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity as the official opposition critic for training colleges and universities to speak about the skills mismatch and its effects in my riding of Whitby, Oshawa. A great young man from my riding graduated from Teachers College last year, and he's always wanted to teach. But for the past uh, year, Speaker, he's not been able to find employment. And after an interview with Durham District School Board, he did not get the position and was told that he could not reapply for a full year. Speaker, thousands from Teachers College uh, will be graduating uh, this year and diluting this young man's opportunities. Mr. Speaker, this skills mismatch continues to grow and all the government can say is that they're conducting another review. And this government's had 13 years to conduct the reviews. Parents in my riding want to know that their sons and daughters can leave university, college, or an apprenticeship with a real opportunity to start a career. Speaker, it's time for the government to take real action and stop graduating people for yesterday's jobs. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. The manufacturing industry isn't what it used to be, nor should it be. As a province, we should be moving forward. We should be an example for the world to follow. But what we shouldn't be doing is leaving people behind. Tomorrow, General Motors will announce its plan to hire 1,000 new engineers to boost its research and development activities in Canada. Make no mistake, this is a good news announcement. It is an important step forward for the auto industry in Ontario and in Oshawa. I'm encouraged by General Motors' continued commitment to Oshawa, but the fact is the families in our community continue to remain uncertain about their futures. Without a new product mandate from General Motors and without a promise to keep the existing 2,500 jobs at the assembly plants, our community is left with more questions than answers. Oshawa has been a leader in the automotive industry for decades, and as we continue to grow as an innovation hub, we must also ensure that the thousands of families that built GM are not left behind. These families have been left in the lurch for more than a decade, and they deserve to know what the future will hold. Oshawa is, and always will be, Motor City, and that is thanks to the efforts of generations of GM employees in our community. Hard work shouldn't go unnoticed, and it shouldn't be forgotten. So, I ask that the government work with GM and fight for our community. Tomorrow's announcement will ensure that the cars of the future will be developed in Oshawa. Now let's make sure they are built in Oshawa, too. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from the Tobacco Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I hold a monthly seniors advisory group meeting in my riding of Etobicoke Centre, and when I started having those meetings, I began to hear from seniors who told me that they had received unwanted sales offers at their door, where salespeople use coercive, aggressive, misleading sales tactics to entice them into contracts that take advantage of them right at their own doorsteps. Under the guise of saving consumers money, many dishonest salespeople dupe consumers into contracts that are more expensive than industry standards, that have harsh cancellation fees, and provide inferior products and services that don't work or that don't perform as advertised. Shameful. While this is an issue that cuts across all ages and backgrounds, it's alarming to see how often these salespeople target those who can be vulnerable. It is reprehensible, beyond reprehensible to me, that some organizations have a business model that's based on taking advantage of vulnerable people. That is why I introduced Bill 193, the Door-to-Door -door Sales Prohibition Act, which would ban the sale, lease, or rent at a consumer's home of products that have been the subject of these reprehensible tactics. And I'm pleased to note that consumer groups, CARP, and a number of municipalities have passed motions supporting my bill and urging a provincial ban on door-to-door -door sales of these products. They include the city of Brampton, Hamilton, Markham, Mississauga, Oshawa, Pickering, the township of North Dundas, the township of Wellington North, and the city of Toronto, amongst others. Consumers have spoken, adv advocacy groups have spoken, and now the municipalities are speaking up as well. We must take action to protect Ontarians from these predatory practices. When my bill is presented for second reading this afternoon, I hope that all members will join me in supporting this legislation. The seniors in my riding and consumers across Ontario deserve no less. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members, thank you, Mr. Member from Halliburton, Cortha Lakes, Prop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We hear there may be a government announcement on human trafficking later this month, even though we gather here on the last day of the House for this session. 
still not having a public comprehensive strategy or adequate dedicated funding. The government has had many opportunities to take action and has chosen not to. My motion for a human trafficking task force was unanimously supported back in 2015, no task force yet. As well, my private member's bill, Saving the Girl Next Door Act, passed second reading unanimously in February, yet it is still languishing in committee. This year's budget, again back in February, was the most direct place for this government to show its care to prioritize this battle, yet the result was no immediate monies dedicated to fight human trafficking. There were reports of human trafficking incidences week after week. In April, the OPP, RCMP and Canada Border Services laid charges against 80 people for sexual assault, making, distributing and accessing child pornography. Investigators also found minors, including girls 14 to 16 years, working in the sex trade against their will. What does it take for this government to understand that every single passing day without action leaves a victim without rescue? Municipalities get it. Toronto, the GTA, Hamilton, Peterborough, over to Gray County, and all the way up to Hearst and Moosonee understand. In fact, 135 municipalities to date have passed resolutions in support of my legislation against human trafficking. It is a province-wide crisis. Moreover, the appropriate funding needs to reach all arms, from police forces to victim services, services to have real effect. This has to be a coordinated effort. A multi-jurisdictional task force is needed now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member's statement. The member for the Community Parkland. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to invite uh, motorcyclists from across the province to the New Liskert Bikers Union. It's in the long weekend of uh, July, July 1st long weekend. And over 15 years, this has gone from 20 bikers in a barbecue to an event where there's over 6,000 motorcyclists come to New Liskard, to Temiskaming Shores every year. It's a family-friendly event, and one of the highlights of this event is the Freedom Ride, where uh, it takes about 10 miles of motorcycles on a route. It's closed off. The, the police and everybody, they participate, and we go in front of the hospital and give gifts to cancer patients, mm -hmm. and seeing the kids out there with the yellow t-shirts, the cancer survivors, it's truly a moving experience. I invite you specifically this year because this, sadly, is going to be the last year of the Bikers Union. Uh, the, the, the driving force behind the Bikers Union, Barry Fippen, and who's still, a, uh, he's still the driving force, he's the originator and driving force, has decided, along with this committee, they've got a lot of volunteers, that they're gonna end this in a high note. And this is going to be the biggest and best Bikers Union that people have ever seen. And if you want to get there, you just have to go up Highway 11. You'll start seeing big yellow signs in memory of about cancer patients. They raise a lot of money for cancer. There's more signs for the Bikers Union than any election campaign in history. <laughs> and it's just, it's a great event. I'd like to thank Barry. Over the years, they have raised over a million dollars, which is a million dollars, which is held in trust by the Tomissimum Foundation. And the proceeds of that will help cancer patients for many, many years to come. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Sounds like hog heaven. Hey, member hi. statements. The member from Ajax Pickering. I just slipped in there. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a joy to be back here this afternoon. I was I was scared we might have to leave at noon hour. I'd like to uh, bring forth information on the 46th annual Ajax Home Week, which commences in two days' time, Sunday, June 12th through June 19th, ending on Father's Day. It is a series of community groups, the uh, Kinsmen, Lions, Optimists, Rotary and Legion, and a number of other church and community groups who assist in producing this week. And generally, it's to say thank you to all the people of Ajax and area for all of the fundraising they people help them with so that they can contribute continually to service and charitable goods. And the week-long celebration, of course, is absolutely for everyone, something we put in the very first day and 46 years ago, regardless of uh, gender, religion, race, age, or personal means, and over 60% of the events are no, no charge. I'm looking, I won't have time to get finished, Mr. Speaker, but you're very generous with me. Uh, the first one is on Sunday, June 12th, and it's at uh, Ajax Downs. It's everything under the sun from free horse racing, free pony betting zoo, free ex exotic animals, mini zoo, children's entertainment professional groups, adult entertainment professional groups, and it goes on. Monday nights, the Lions Pass the night, Tuesday and Thursday night are the Joe and Donna Dixon free swim nights at McLean Center. That's for first there, first serve. And on uh, 
Thursday, St. Timothy's Church. Friday, St. Timothy's Church barbecue. It's a great time as well. Finn McCool's hold a <clears throat> giant party in the Durham Center. Free classic antique car show at the Canadian Tire in the Durham Center. And I'm getting down to the last day, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> your, your generosity. And there is a peace and harmony multicultural concert at Thank uh, you. Forsbrook Church. And the big day. Oh, the big day? The big day, if I could, Mr. Speaker, is the last day of it is Father's Day. Is uh, what emergency services and first uh, responders do. They do a thank day. You. We bring in the police. I helicopter. thank the member from Ajax. It goes on and on and on. And it ends, I Mr. Speaker, the with the giant, largest Ajax fireworks Pickering. in all the Durham region. And that's in Ajax. I, I, I thank the member. We'll from see you. And I thank, thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. It's called word count. The member from the member statements, <laughs> the member of Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so excited to see here in the members' gallery, we've got Jenna and her sister Jordan and their mom. I'm sorry, her name just escaped me for a second, but it'll come to me in a minute. Elise. And they are the Zarakoff family, and they're doing Jenna's lemonade stand again this year in memory of their father and late husband, Stuart, who died of lymphoma. It's a fantastic fundraiser, and this Saturday, rain or shine at 11 a.m., it's going to be at 45 Loma Vista Drive in Thornhill. And you can go online to donate if you can't make it at www.lymphoma.ca. There's going to be lemonade, treats, bracelets, all kinds of stuff for sale. It's a lot of fun. It's just a short walk from my house. So I hope to see lots of people there. This is the sixth year that they're doing this fundraiser. And I just want to mention to people, I've said it a few times in this house, that in Thornhill, people don't just talk, they do. They don't just say, oh, you know what, we need to raise money for something or for a cause or we care about something in the community. They write letters to the editor, they set up a charity, they join a charity, they go and support the charities. So that's why it's such an honour for me to represent Thornhill and see people like Jen and her sister. And I'm sorry that the security guard made you turn your t-shirts inside out. They had wonderful uh, t-shirts, Mr. Speaker, that said Jenna's Lemonade Stand. And the colour for to support lymphoma is purple. So I urge everybody to go online to donate, to stop by at lemonade, the lemonade stand, uh, Jenna's lemonade stand that Jordan helped so much with, and to wear purple and to support and keep a smile on your face because we're such a great community. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A couple of weeks ago, I was thrilled to attend an exciting celebration at Cinespace Film Studios in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore. York University announced the opening of a new satellite campus location of York University School of the Arts, Media Performance and Design in Etobicoke Lakeshore. Alongside Mamdou Shukri, President and Vice Chancellor of York University, Jeff O'Hagan, York University's Vice President for Advancement, and Sean Brixey, Dean of the School of Arts, Media, Performance and Design, the Mercopolis family announced that they have provided a generous donation of two and a half million dollars to create a new York University AMPD motion media studio at Cinespace Film Studios. The state-of-the-art facility for teaching, learning and producing content is embedded at Cinespace's Kipling Avenue Studio complex in my riding. And this will allow students to explore the creation, convergence and application of next generation arts and entertainment media technologies. These students will be able to do so in a real movie studio environment, thereby enhancing the value of their academic pursuits. This generous gift will also have a lasting impact on Etobicoke Lakeshore as it continues to establish itself as a world-recognized film and creative industries hub. Mr. Speaker, with this addition of a second post-secondary learning institution in my riding, the first being Humber College, my community is welcoming both students and industry to thrive in Ontario. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. It gives me great pleasure to rise and inform the House today that tomorrow, 
my private member's bill, looking after the tips of, of, of precarious employees, comes into effect. And uh, I'm not only are we out there protecting precarious workers in Ontario, and I'm very excited about that, but what I'm really excited is to tell you about the 28th International Beaches Jazz Festival, which starts July the 2nd. Uh, it's now extended to a third week, Speaker, three weekends starting on July 2nd, and the first week is dedicated to salsa. And I'm going to try to encourage the Minister of Fun and Fitness, uh, Minister Couteau, to come and join us there, uh, get a salsa groove on. Now, they continue this year to have the very popular Queen Street Fest, where every couple of blocks they have a different band, a lot of local, all local bands from across Ontario and the GTA, who play on the street corners, and you can walk up and down Queen Street. But this year, they've extended it up way out into Riverdale and Leslieville as well. So that, that day, which will uh, coming up, will be an incredible day. I encourage everyone to get around. We are also returning this year to Kew Garden stage, which is where Lido Chiali founded the Beaches Jazz that's 28 years ago. Uh, but it's been on at Woodbine Park and doing because of the, 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 the crowds got so big. But we're going back to Kew Gardens for a mini series, and, and a cappella is making its second year. It was so successful last year, the a cappella. And finally, we're now moving the Beaches Jazz into what we call the Farmers Market series. And all the farmers markets in the East End of Toronto are going to have the opportunity to have a local band playing music during the festival while people are buying the fresh goods in Ontario because, Speaker, good things do grow in Ontario. Thank you. I think you meant the uh, Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. I think that's what you meant. Uh, point of order, the member from uh, Newmarket, Aurora. Yes, point of order, Mr. Speaker. I believe that you'll find we have unanimous consent that members be permitted to wear pins for brain tumour awareness. The member from Newmarket, Aurora, seeking unanimous consent to wear the pins for brain tumour. Do we agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Reports by